grace, peace, mercy to you from God, our Father, and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, message is for the Holy Trinity Sunday, and it comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. We live in a world of complex variety. Here in the land of the free, where scripture is freely taught and shared on radio and television, it seems that fewer people's lives are changing to live their lives for Christ. On the other hand, in the East and in the Arab world and in Africa and in China, where there is persecution upon Christians, there are many who are coming to faith and their lives are so transformed that they do not fear of being persecuted or killed for Christ. Today is Trinity Sunday. Trinity is our faith and belief in the triune God. In the Gospel reading, we see that Nicodemus, a Pharisee, is a Jewish leader who is not shy coming to Jesus. He comes to Jesus without hesitation or fear. He comes without an ulterior motive. He is not trying to trap Jesus like other religious leaders. He comes to Jesus knowing that Jesus is a religious leader. His respect for Jesus is seen in his address as he calls Jesus Rabbi. He acknowledged the great things and the miracles that Jesus is doing, and he believes that this is an act of God. God knows the heart and mind of people. As humans, when, when people appreciate and, and compliment us, our natural response is, thank you. Praise be to God. You are very very kind, etc. In the case of Nicodemus, Jesus did not get into such things. Jesus came so that we may all have life. And Jesus' response to Nicodemus pertains to the eternal matters of Nicodemus' life. See, Jesus is not just a man. He is also God. God the Son, Jesus Christ, came for the salvation of mankind. Knowing the heart of Nicodemus, his response is, Very truly, I tell you, no one can, and can enter and see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Nicodemus is taken by surprise. Today, <clears throat> this is a common terminology among Christians to be born again. As we know what it means, but if we were to say this very sentence to a friend who is a Muslim or a Hindu or a Sikh, they too would be taken by surprise like Nicodemus. God is describing the salvation of his miraculous work. And we see that Nicodemus is naive about spiritual matters. And so his natural question to Jesus is, how can a person who is born can be born again and how would it be possible for the one who is already born to get back into their mother's womb to be born again here Jesus is talking about spiritual truth he's talking about spiritual birth that being born of the flesh is according to the natural laws of nature flesh begets flesh to be born of the spirit is a supernatural birth which only takes place by the water and the spirit coming together under the word of God this is a, a birth born from above as it is translated in Greek this birth takes place in every believers life at the time of his baptism <clears throat> The provision of baptism is made by God. It is all about God and only about what God has done for you and for me through the water and the spirit. In order for us to see and enter into the kingdom of God, we are to be born of the spirit and that we experience at our baptism. <clears throat> 
The triune God works the salvation of mankind together, just as the triune God worked the creation of the universe together. The triune God was at work in the incarnation of Jesus, in Jesus' public ministry at his baptism God the Holy Spirit came down as a dove and God the Father declared him God the Son Jesus as his son <clears throat> the very ethos of Christianity is Trinity no Trinity no Christianity the Latin word for Trinity means three are one each member of Trinity is fully God. There are not three different gods as perceived by Muslims, nor is it one God with multiple tasks. Only the one from heaven can reveal and solve this mystery. The Father sent the Son to earn our forgiveness, so he sends the Holy Spirit to offer that forgiveness to us through the gift of faith the triune God work together to satisfy both love and justice there are some religious groups who claim to be Christians but they reject Trinity they conduct church services just like us and many seekers go and attend their church they enjoy the church and great service and worship band and whatnot and are deceived into a wrong faith thinking that they have become a Christian by coming to this church many Christians who believe in Trinity do not understand Trinity and when questioned about it they simply have nothing to say of what and why they believe in it to the world of Islam, Trinity is highly offensive. And it reminds them of the time of Crusades, which was a war between Muslims and the Crusaders that went on for 196 years. Interestingly, the question on Trinity should be an opportunity for us to be able to share the faith that we have in Jesus Christ faith is in receiving Jesus and believing in his name as said in John 3 the son of man must be lifted up so that there is eternal life for those who believe in him God the Father sent his son into the world because God is love God the son Jesus Christ was lifted up on the cross just like the snake that was lifted up by Moses in the wilderness to save the dying Israelites in the same way Jesus died to save us from eternal damnation believing and trusting in Christ is in receiving forgiveness for all our past our present and future sins into eternal life and now God the Holy Spirit brings to benefit us that what Christ has won for us on the cross which is forgiveness life eternal salvation it is only because of God the Spirit who brings the benefit of the cross on which Christ won the victory over sin death and the devil God the Holy Spirit quickens us and brings us from death to life through the gospel the word of God in with and under the water is the power of the holy baptism. Baptism is that life-giving sacrament bringing us to faith and rising us to new life. Hence giving us our real spiritual birthday, our real new life. In our reading from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, we are to be like Peter to stand up together with one voice and proclaiming this new life in Jesus Christ to those around us who do not know, who have not experienced the awesome and the magnificent love of our triune God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are to be glad and our tongues rejoicing that our Lord and Savior is alive. He has risen witnessed 
by all and exalted on the right hand of God who pours out his Holy Spirit upon those who now see and hear. The enemy, the Satan, the devil is defeated who is now a footstool of our feet. We have this assurance that God has made for us in Jesus Christ both Lord and Messiah. God is sending all these Muslim immigrants to the United States. The Muslim population is estimated to be close to 8 million. Fort Worth and Arlington is a ripe mission field to take the love of Jesus Christ to this wonderful people who so sincerely love God. Islam thinks that Christianity believes in three gods and that they object Jesus being called the Son of God. They consider this blasphemous. And, and that is why their key verse in their Quran is La ilaha illallah, meaning there is no God but Allah. This is their central call that God is one and only and cannot have any other else to be a partner with him. By this they mean Jesus, the son of God. This is a hindrance when approaching a Muslim regarding the message of saving grace. Muslim live under the law and have no idea about the gospel. Their lives are continuously about work, blinded by the devil to remain in sin and eternal damnation. They continue to live under, under the deception of earning their ways into eternity and by pleasing God. This gives all the good reason to meet and make friends with Muslims. By doing so, it gives you the opportunity to share the love of Jesus and to build a, a lifelong eternal relationship with them. It is hard for a Muslim to believe and comprehend that how can God be one and triune at the same time. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. And Muslims do not know the truth, that which is hidden in Trinity. Many Christians do fail to understand this. The Bible in Ephesians 2 tells us that we were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world. This is because of following the prince of the power of the air and being a child of wrath who are passionate about the flesh and carrying out the desires of the body and mind. Nicodemus and the people of Islam and all the other world religions being natural people do not accept the things of the Spirit of God because those things seem foolishness to them hence they are not able to understand them because such things can only be spiritually discerned. That is, what we, that is what we cannot see and understand can only be revealed by God through God the Holy Spirit in the mystery of faith. Christianity teaches that in Trinity, God is a community of three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches there is one and only one God. God is not asking us like the Muslims to understand it, but to believe it. The Athanasian Creed in particular helps us to contemplate the mystery of the Trinity by faith, not by understanding. God is so desperate to have his people delivered from the bondage of sin and death that Jesus is visiting Muslim people in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Sudan, through dreams and visions. Those very people in the midst of ISIS persecution are receiving Jesus Christ at the expense of losing their life and families and properties and everything. They have no source of income, yet God, through divine intervention, is providing them food, clothing, and shelter. We are his sheep. 
and people of his pasture. And how much are we desperate for God? How much are we part of God's desperate desire for the salvation of the lost souls? 100 to 150 students weekly visit the Lutheran Student Center where the love of Christ is shared in our service to them through foods and devotions. And more than that, we need people who can develop a relationship with them and invite them out to see and experience the true love of Jesus Christ. Our church school brings a greater opportunity to meet, to relate, and to develop friendship with individual families that they can experience a unique touch and taste of Christ. As I was typing um, my today's message, a colleague of mine made a, made a comment. Are you writing a book? I said to him, no. I'm working on a, on a message for this Sunday. And he said, good luck to death. I am an atheist. Another colleague who claims to be a Christian, but he feels embarrassed to be seen by his friends outside the church. But surely he has no problem being seen outside a bar. Sex is not a, a, a big deal as long as both during the time of commitment are faithful to each other and later on part their ways and repeat the same cycle with somebody else. Day after day, the entertainment media have lost the sense of moral values. So that which once was not okay to the secular world seems as if it has become okay with regular church-going Christian families. We, the children, are picking up so-called modern Western values of life. It is amazing when a non-believing immigrant sees today's Christianity, they do not see it from the biblical perspective. But though but through what the modern culture and society has to offer them. We need people like Nicodemus who comes to Jesus. But there are also people who don't want to know Jesus. And so what are we to do with those kind of people? We are to keep on loving them, for then they will know that we are Christians by our love. We become the hand and feet of Christ to them in their time of need and showing to them Christ by our character and not by our criticism. We are to let them experience the Shekinah glory of God as it was experienced by Isaiah. The message of the saving grace of salvation is in Trinity and there is no shying or hiding away from it. First Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Then on to verse 23 it says, But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greek foolishness. But for those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. We have to take it as it is to the people of all nations that God is bringing in our midst, be it Muslim, be it Hindu, be it Sikh. Like, if like Isaiah, you have seen the king of kings whose train of his robe fills the worship, then you will shout out like Peter, proclaiming the salvation of the Lord, continuing to loving those who are under the bondage of sin and Satan. For God the Father, so loved the world that he gave his only one son, God the Son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in God the Son, Jesus, will never die but will have everlasting life. The less we talk about it, the fader it will be coming to our coming generation and the more difficult it will become for us to proclaim and make sense of it to them. God uses us as his hands and feet through the power of God. 
the Holy Spirit. The God who lives and reigns in me cannot be quiet, but leaps out with joy the salvation for all mankind, fully filled with his great and awesome power. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Every week, let us intentionally look and speak at at least one person and develop a relationship and bring them to church to experience the presence of God and to share the loving fellowship of the believers. As we prepare ourselves to come to the table of the Lord, to feast upon his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us stand in all like Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 where we hear too in this divine service the Lord is high and exalted seated on the throne and the train of his robe fills this worship and our spirit like the seraphim calls out that we come to the table of the Lord crying out holy 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 is the Lord Almighty the whole earth is full of his glory and as we experience the holy presence of Lord that we like Isaiah might shout out might cry out woe to me I am ruined for we are people of unclean lips and that we live among people of unclean lips and that our eyes have seen the King the Lord Almighty and as we feed upon the feast, may it be like that coal, touch our mouth and take away our guilt and atone our sins. And together we all might shout and proclaim to the call of the Great Commission, Here I am, O Lord, send me. Let the earth rejoice and people be glad that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are nothing but an empty vessel. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and fill us, cleanse us and purify us. That in us would come this, this passionate desire to reach out about your salvation to those who do not know you. Let it be so that at least one person would come to know you as his Lord and Savior and experience of being born again. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.